Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, and this is part two of my first impression video that I did with my wife. And part one, we talked about Mugler Cologne Fly Away, Club de Nuit Intense Man Perfume Oil Edition, and a little bit about Ajmal Mystery. In part two, which is this video, we talk about Bucephalus number 11, the new arm off, and Hugo reversed. Like I said at the end of part one, it ran really, really long. This video originally was 48 minutes, so I chopped out a ton and still had to break it up into two different parts. So maybe in the future, if my wife and I do some more first impressions, we'll try to talk a little bit less. If you haven't seen part one, you should maybe start there, just because we make reference to these two fragrances at different parts in part two, because it was all shot at once. With that out of the way, let's get into this. It picks up right where part one left off. So we have two left. Which one do you want to go for? Hugo reversed or Bucephalus number 11? <laughs> I'll save the Bucephalus for last. <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, okay. You know somebody will tell Bucephalus. you. Bucephalus. So Hugo Reverse then. Yep, okay. let's do it. I keep smelling the Club de Nuit. I mean, I've got to say it smells pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of growing on me even more. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, grab the Mueller and give that a, a smell really quickly. It's changed a little bit. I love that. I, would this be considered the mid? A little bit, probably. It's, it's heading into the mid. Oh my. This, I mean, is probably gonna be maybe even one of my favorites. Really? Yeah, I mean, it's that good in my opinion. It's really, it's it's super nice. I mean, yeah. summertime, I'll be giving that a I think that they knocked it out of the park with that one. Really? Mm -hmm. Big fan, huh? Yes, absolutely. Next up is Hugo Reversed, which I think is so stupid looking because it <laughs> says Ogu. I know that's Hugo, they have a line that's Hugo Reversed, but yeah. still. So here's a quick look at the bottle, Ogu. Hugo reversed, and there's a look at the bottom. So like I said, this one was a tester, and looks like a little canteen where you screw the top. I'll give this a spray for you and you can check it out. Here's one for you. Nice strong atomizer on that. Yep. I like it. I'm not hating on it. I mean, it's, it's fresh, it's clean. Yeah, it's just like a fresh mm -hmm. citrus. It's all right. It's like, um, just like a citrus combo. I know that there's supposed to be rosemary in here, and vetiver in the base. I mean, off the top, it's not really anything that's like super um, attention grabbing. For me, it's pretty, it's pretty basic. I mean, it's pleasant. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be mass appealing, crowd pleasing, but it's, it's basic. It's okay. What's funny is off the tester strip, and I'm sure this is just the tester strip, it has like a, like almost like a Play-Doh thing to it. Yeah. It, it's weird, it's. A little bit. Yeah, like I'm not sure how to explain that. Because I know it's just citrus and then rosemary and vetiver. That's the only notes. Yeah, there's a little something something in there. A breakthrough and freshness combining sparkling citrus notes with the power of the woods. So this one to me is not as good as the Mugler Cologne. No. Yeah, it's just, no. it's not. I think that this is like um, a casual young guy scent for like summertime, mm -hmm. basically. I just want to keep smelling that Mugler. God, it's so good. I would like doing contrast and compare. This is seriously going to be one of my like all-time favorites, I think. You think so? Yes. You're it's, all about I mean, that. To me, it's that good. I'm going to take the Hugo and give that a spray on my hand just to see if it um, maybe smells a little different right. off skin. Maybe it's, maybe it's got a little more something coming off skin, you know. Maybe it smells a little better. No different, really. Here. Mm-mm. Not really. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just okay. It's basically one of those fragrances that I would tell you I I think it's okay. Like, I like it as yeah. a fresh, casual, summer kind of fragrance. Yeah. But as far as being different or attention grabbing or anything like that, not really. It, it, this is my first impression anyway. Any, any different to you or? No, not really. Yeah, I keep going back to it expecting it to like blow me away or something and I don't see that's the thing I don't really have a need to go back to it because it's good but there's nothing that's going to keep bringing me back and wanting to smell it again and again like Mugler. What's weird is it's been kind of hard to find for a little bit mm -hmm. like it sold pretty well I think through uh, discounters mm -hmm. and I was actually gonna pick this up 
before it was even released in the US. Like I was gonna order it from Europe and then I was like, ah, I'll just wait because it, it'll be cheap once it gets to the US because a lot of times Hugo fragrances get discounted really heavily. And I put it off and put it off and put it off, finally picked it up and I was like, oh, I bet this is gonna be like a really awesome summer fragrance. Like it's gonna really punch you with the citrus and you know, really refreshing, super uplifting. Mm-hmm. Nope, that, it's, you're describing the Mugler right now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's a letdown, if I'm, if I'm gonna be honest. Just what I expected, I guess, versus what I got. It's okay. Yeah. That's basically, it smells like a lot of other stuff out there, like a lot of just, hey, I got out of the shower, it's hot outside, and I'm gonna go do something with my friends outside or whatever, and you just grab something that's gonna be fresh. See, I've and already that's what even, that is. I've already forgotten about it. Mm. Yeah, see, give it a smell again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah, out of the three we've smelled so far, that's the worst. Bucephalus number 11. Mm -hmm. And I also don't get the number in convention because they have Bucephalus number nine, 10, and 11. Like what about one through eight? Here it is, Bucephalus number 11. <laughs> that looks like a, like an oversized bullet or something. <laughs> like that's huge. Bucephalus number 11. First off, you've got this monstrous box, Bucephalus number 11, our moth. We got that batch code info on the bottom of the box. And from out of that comes this. This <laughs> huge, like, I don't even know what how to explain that. Huge like sarcophagus. So you have this big bad boy that comes out of the box. I don't want to have it like pull too hard and then the bottle goes flying or something. Hey. Bucephalus number 11. That's really gimmicky looking. <gasps> how dare you. It has a certificate of authenticity. Look at that. That is the best certificate of authenticity I've ever seen. Look at that certificate of authenticity. Yeah, baby. Bucephalus must be like the name of the horse or something. Sure, that's probably it. We're going with that. And this is number 11 in the line of... of Buce it's like Bucephalus 11. It's like they've done right. all their... They've Bucephalus named all their, the 11th. Yeah, they've named all their race horses you Bucephalus. Can sit right in here if you wanted to. Kind of cool. And this looks like Penhaligon bottles. Uh, you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but Penhaligon's has the portraits collection and the top is like a different animal, but there's this gold and looks better, but it's kind of like that. So here it is, Bucephalus number 11, and check that out. Sweet. So you think it's gimmicky looking? Yeah. You're a player hater. Again, just kind of basic to me. I know this is supposed to be the new Aventus clone, but to me... I'm not getting any Aventus. The opening here is not super Aventus-y, yeah. I think I get that. It's got more like a vanilla thing going I was on. actually going to say the exact same thing. I smell a good amount of vanilla in it. Yeah. Yeah, instead of being like a lot of bergamot or pineapple or something like that, this is going on a vanilla road. Vanilla road. That's stupid. It's got like parts of the Aventus DNA, like if you took the vanilla part of Aventus and put that into a fragrance, but it doesn't have that, at least off a of tester, that fruity opening or even smoky opening. No. So I'm gonna try this one on skin too, just for the heck of it. If I can find some skin that hasn't been sprayed. Yeah. You can be the test dummy. Atomizer on this is a little weak too. It does kind of like a little puff mm -hmm. instead of really giving you a good blast. And this one is from July 2019, according to the batch. There's a little more fruit mm -hmm. off skin, a little bit. Yeah, I think it smells, it does smell a little different. On skin. Yeah, it does. Because it's much more vanilla heavy yeah. off the tester strip. Off skin, you do get this little fruity burst. Uh, smells more like bergamot, yeah. But it's like a vanilla bergamot because there's still vanilla there. And it doesn't really, at least right now coming off her skin, I don't really get that smokiness. Mm -mm. Yeah. Do you get any wood smoke at all? Uh, not really right now. Mm. Um, I'm still smelling a lot of the bergamot. Yeah, yeah, like vanilla and bergamot initially. Yeah, I still don't think it's really like a good um, Aventus clone. It's not giving you that Aventus feel? No. I can see that it's a little bit Aventus-y, a yeah. little bit, but I would say 
in a direct comparison, like if you say Bucephalus number 11 compared to Club de Nuit Intense Man, it's much more obvious that Club de Nuit Intense Man is trying to be Aventus than it is that this is trying to be Aventus. I just hate that bottle. Bucephalus. Why do you hate this bottle so much? It looks so cool. The problem with it, I think, is that it's trying to give across this air of like class, but at the same time, it's cheap. And it's one of those things where uh, you can kind of point to it and be like, that's not actually expensive. You're wearing a, a knockoff, you know? Yeah. Like somebody that's wearing uh, an obviously fake Louis Vuitton bag or something. Mm -hmm. It's like they're trying to come across like this is luxurious, but then when you actually look at it, you're like, no, that actually looks pretty cheesy. And that's kind of what this bottle is. When you see it from far away, you're kind of like maybe, oh, that looks like it might be expensive. And then you get it up in your hands and you're like, oh no, it's actually just really cheap. See, it's just, it's forgettable in my opinion. With the bottle? No, just the fragrance. I was gonna say the bottle's not forgettable. It's got a no, big the... freaking horse head on top <laughs> no, of it. No, that bottle is, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's, unique. it's already dinged up though. Like it's uh, plastic on the top here and mm -hmm. the ears are kind of chipped and stuff. Uh, the atomizer just does a little, like I said, a little puff. Let me smell your arm again. I mean, I can, it's Aventus E, but it's, eh, I'll wear it some and then review it. I think the perfume oil, the Club de Nuit Intense Man perfume oil actually smells better than Bucephalus does, if you can still. Yeah, so, I would agree. Yeah, so scent wise, this smells better than this. Yes. Yeah, I think that out of all of these, my favorite's the Mugler. The Mugler Cologne is my favorite too. Yeah, we probably even have the same second favorite if I had to guess. My second favorite is the Club de Nuit Intense Man perfume yep. oil. Yep. And then my third, my third favorite is probably the Hugo, just for casual summer use. See, I don't really know if I can pick a third just because they're all so... At that point, you don't care? Yeah, I just don't really care anymore. <laughs> Anything else that you'd like to say? No. Nope. Me either. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all your support, and we'll see you again next time with another fragrance video. Bye-bye.